Hi, my name is David. I'm going to show you how to cold smoke trout. I'm going to show you how to fillet the trout, how to cure the trout, how to smoke the trout, how to slice the trout, and finally how to vacuum pack the trout. Place the fish on the filleting board. Cut behind the gills with your sharp filleting knife. Just cut off that front fin down to the spine. Feel the spine turn through 90 degrees and smooth but firm strokes. There's one fillet. Turn the fish over repeat. Down to the spine, along the spine, don't cut the head off, makes it a lot more tricky if you do. There's two, now we have to cut off the ribs. Cut along there, cutting off like so. Don't want that bottom bit. That's going to be removed like that. Trim it up. There's one to the second one. Again, we don't want the bottom part of the fish, so we cut it off. It will be trimmed again once we've smoked it, cured it, but we want to trim off this so that the cure and the smoke gets to that part of the fish. There you are, two fillets. We still have the pin bones to remove, there and there. They are much easier to remove once it's been cured. Trying to remove them when the fish is fresh is much more tedious and it tends to pull out flesh with it and damages the fish whereas they come out much quicker and easier once it's been cured. Curing the fish. There are various recipes for cures but the most basic, the most simple is half salt, half sugar. I use sea salt although I can't be sure I can tell the difference and I use demerara sugar, although you can use ordinary white beet sugar. But I prefer cane sugar because I think it gives a slightly deeper colour to the fish. Anyway, a little sprinkle in the bottom of your plastic container. Not critical. Place the fillets. So. You may see uh, some people stack them up, put more on top. I don't like to do that because where they touch you don't get as much cure and the cure can be uneven. So I would like to put them just one layer thick. Then you add your 50-50 salt sugar mix. You can be generous, especially over the thicker bits. Salt and sugar is not expensive, but there's nothing worse than a bit of fish that's not properly cured. So, there we go. 
I tend to buy my salt online. You can buy it in supermarkets, sea salt, but it's a lot more expensive there. Every, especially the thick bits are fully covered. Doesn't matter too much about covering the tail because it's very thin. Uh, it's the front bit. Now you will read, you will see on videos people saying you should then, especially if there's more than one layer, put something on to compress them, some mechanical pressure, like a, some tin cans on a, on a layer or a something. I think that is wrong. The water is removed by osmotic pressure. It is not removed by mechanical pressure. Mechanical pressure simply deforms the fish. It does not make more water come out of the fish. It's purely osmotic pressure that makes the water come out of the fish. The amount of water that comes out of the fish depends on how much salt and sugar mix you've put on, but more importantly it depends on how long you leave it in the cure. That depends on how thick your fish is. A typical two, two and a half pounder probably only needs 24 hours overnight and a bit. A bigger fish, say four pounds, five pounds, I have tend to cure it for at least two days, two overnights. You can under cure it uh, and it's quite obvious uh, it, the, the flesh is soft and squidgy whereas properly cured fish it's firm and dry and as it should be. The Norwegians like their salmon well cured and so do I. It's a matter of personal preference. Now we've done that, we simply cover it, place it in the fridge for the time that I stated. These are the fish that have been curing in the fridge overnight. I want to turn them and just move the cure around just to make it more even. As you can see, a lot of water has already come out of the fish and it's less than 24 hours. The fish already quite firm and solid which is how I want them to be. Put those back in the fridge. Okay these fish have been in the fridge for 24 hours. It's now time to wash them. Wash off the, the cure into the sink. Lovely colour. It's a lovely trout. I tend to give them a slight soak, try and remove some of the salt. Leave that to soak. Remove the tray. Down to soak. That will do. Let them drain. Now I want to pin bone them. I rinse the fish and patted it dry. We now want to remove the pin bones, which, as I said, before is much easier. Now it's been cured. You can feel them with your finger but you can see them. And they come out relatively easily. And if you pull, as you pull slightly towards the head it doesn't rip the flesh. And once it's been smoked you really can't see where the pin bones have been. Although you can remove them once it's been smoked, it's again personal preference. And you can run your finger along and see if you've missed any. Some people say you should keep them in the fridge to dry out or, or air dry them even. The pellicle is supposed to absorb more smoke. I'm not sure about that. I tend to think a pedicle would actually prevent the smoke getting through to the flesh. So I really don't think it makes much difference whether you leave them to dry out 
or whether you just put them straight into the smoker. From my uh, findings, it doesn't make any difference. This is my cold smoker. There are all sorts of different ones. This one is on the large side. It is important in a cold smoker to have the source of smoke where your smoke powder, your sawdust goes away from the smoking area because you do not want to cook the fish. The fish must be smoked cool. In this particular model, as you can see, there is a dividing piece of metal that keeps the heat away. The trays I bought separately, they're just simple cake trays and if I want to increase the space I just use another cake tray and stand it on there. Smoking the fish. This is the sawdust. I tend to use beech or oak or a bit of both but whatever your preference. I have microwaved the sawdust in two or three batches, each batch for about a minute just to dry it out. The last thing you want is your sawdust going out during the smoking process. The quantity of dust is personal preference. I've got a full container here. I tend to use less than this, but the fish are quite large. So again, it's a bit of trial and error depending on how much smoke flavor you want. Right, the sawdust is going nicely. I've removed the tea light and now I'm going to just restrict the entrance so that the smoke goes into the smoker and that will take six, eight, ten hours, depends on the wind. So we'll come back later and see how we're getting on. Smoking finished. Let's have a look inside. This is the fish from the smoker. I'm going to take off this top layer. It's, uh, it's not very nice and I take it off some people like to leave it on when they slice the fish. I don't. It's up to you. Um, just check the pin bones. I've got one here. Take it out. There you go. Trim it up. a nice long knife to do this. You can use obviously an ordinary carving knife as long as it's very sharp but it's not as easy. The length makes it so much easier. I think it's worth the investment. Right, then we start carving. Slicing. You can take the flesh off the skin first and remove the lateral line, but it makes slicing it much more difficult. The slices tend to fall apart. This is a lovely fish. There's the ladder. There's the lateral line. I shall cut that bit out in a second. And this bit some perfectly edible fish there. I'll cut that off. Skin, we don't want that a bit. We'll use in a minute. Alright, don't want that natural line, so I'll cut it out. Put the slices on the skin.
that's just one side there is room for another side and now going to vacuum pack your sliced trout finished product, I'll probably label it with a marker pen and that will keep fresh in the fridge for two or three weeks possibly even longer I hope you enjoyed the video